Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. It's Thanksgiving Day. I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving. And what I want to get into today is I want to show you how to do pivot tables in R. You know, we a lot of us do pivot tables in Excel, but what if we want to do them in R and make it a part of an automated process or something similar to that? I don't want to have to go and take and put stuff from Excel into R, then take it out of R, put it back in Excel, manually do pivot tables and pivot charts, and then bring it back in again. So instead, uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to do the pivot tables in R. And then the end output from these, you'll see in the data file or the uh, data frames that I'm going to create here, you, have, you will see that the data is similar in format to what we use in the seasonality videos that I've created, um, the uh, forecasting videos and other stuff so there's a lot of great things you can take from this this is a part like so you'll see in the recent ones I've done for the Sankey diagram and I'm gonna do some more with it you'll see some of these data uh, types or data formats in the end from those so let's get into this so basically what I have here at the top I have all my code is laid out right here for you okay this is the entire code for this now let me do this let's bring it back up so what I'm gonna start with first is I want to do the uh, pivot tables I want to load the libraries right so I always have this on top so that you can see you know to install the packages obviously so you're gonna install these packages right here again let me give you an idea if you have issues with this you have weird errors pro you're probably not at the most recent level of R on your computer so or laptop or server so you may want to upgrade if you get strange errors I've had a couple of people that tell me that, you know with this code that they get that and then we find out that they're way back in a you know many versions prior instead of trying to fix those issues just make sure you're on the most recent version that makes it a whole lot simpler and a whole lot easier so these are the packages we're going to be using read excel obviously to read in our uh, data right here so that's where the read xlsx underscore xlsx comes from we're going to use reshape 2 our pivot table ggplot2 and tidyverse so that's what we have right there Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this, which gets this. It's this the data example I have here is Quickie Mart sales. Let me see if I have it open here so you can see it. And here it is. So basically, it has customer IDs, store numbers, transaction number, transaction date, quantity sold, uh, the selling price, and the period. Period would be like uh, so. This is for a probably a campaign and so it's pre during and post so they have a period and they figured out what is the pre period what is the post period and what is the during period and you see here you have pre during and post so let's go back to R here and what we're first gonna do so right now you're looking at that was query one and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add with this format function see that and as date what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the month and the week as columns okay so by using percent M so this right here, format as date, query one, there's your date, you know, the data frame, you use dollar sign to access the uh, column, and we're going to get the month based on that. Now, week is not percent %w, it would make sense to have that, instead it's percent uppercase v, so that gives you the week, and same thing, so we put that as month and week, and you'll see once you run these two, you end up with, you saw this, where you had up to period, now you have month so based on this date you have the month and then you have the week so in this case it's week 44 45 you know 33 all that so if we go back here next what I want to show you is we're gonna aggregate these right so what we're gonna do is go for, and I'm using different uh, data frames here so you can see the steps as we go from one to the next so in data frame 2 or query 2 what we're gonna do is we're gonna aggregate by the quantity sold amount okay and we're gonna use the customer ID and month so watch what happens here so now remember we had query one we had all these columns here right query two once we do that we oh we only have three we have we've so look at the code again we have customer ID month and we have a number column X so if we go back to this we have the sold amount by customer ID and month. So we saw customer ID and month, but this one is aggregated. Okay, so it's like sum as sum field or a sum column. So we're aggregating by that. So if you were doing a pivot table, you can aggregate 
But in Excel, you can aggregate based on, you know, you pick like a uh, customer ID and month, and it'll aggregate based on this. This is exactly what we're doing right here. So now you end up with this, with that code. So we have customer ID still, we have months, and we can go and look at this through all the different months, eight, nine, 10, you know, and the number associated with those for that customer, for that unique customer. So if we go back to here, the next thing is we want to take the months into rows by month. So this is where we use the uh, transformability with decast, and this is where we actually pivot these. Okay, so remember we are at query two right now. All right, see customer ID, month, and this. And we want to take the months and break them out. See how there's, we have month eight right now showing. We also have seven, nine, ten, whatever. I want to see those up here, right? So what we're going to do is run this decast. See this right here? You run this, and we're going to break it out by month. See how that works? So decast, this is the data frame, query two. This is the uh, customer ID, and then we're going to keep that, right? We're going to break that out by month. So watch what happens here. We run query three, and here we go. We got customer ID, as I told you, okay? But see that? So we got the, the one you're going to keep is in front, and then the one we're breaking out is behind it. So we're breaking out month, and look at this. We broke it out. Now we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now you can actually see the different months by customer ID. Now a lot of these zeros will first have NAs that there's no number, numbers missing, or uh, there. So when you go back here, I have this. I've already run this this little bit right here. So before this, we ran this decast, right? We just went over that, okay? But now what we're going to do for that is this right here. Where what we do is we take query three, but we want is dot na, and we are going to take where it is this, and we're going to put a zero in there. So anything in query three that has an na in it goes to having a zero in it. So when you look at query three, all the nas that these would all be nas now have zeros all over them. Okay, that's easier to work with than nas. Now. So your end output right here at this point is this, right? But maybe I want to go and delve deeper into this. So we've got customer ID and we've broken this out. So it's a pivot table, but maybe I want to do something else here. So let's go further with this. So now maybe what I want to do is period by month. So we have right here, we have this one where I'm doing again, the casting, remember? So we're going back to query one. So query three, I'm not using right now. So we're using query one, the original query, and we're going to break out month but instead we're going to break it out by period. So we run that and then we run this, okay, which is the order of the columns. Watch this. So let's go back here and look at query four and query five. So query four is right here, right? So right now we have it. So we have during, post, and pre. Now remember I told you I was going to reorder the columns because we don't want it that way. It's the same thing if you ran this in Excel. You know how you always end up with pre at the bottom or in the middle and then you have to right click on it and say move to the top or to the beginning it's the exact same thing here in R so what we have to do is we want pre here and then went during and post we need to put it in a better order so if we go back here that's what this line right here is going to do okay see this so we got query 4 and we put the columns we decide well because they're out of order let's put them in order so let's get them you know the number of the column and move them into the correct order that we need so in this case, once we look at query five, which is what it is, look at that. So you got pre is here. So remember, this is a column here too. So remember I had four columns when I'm ordering it. Pre was originally at the last, so that would be four. So we need one, four, and then two and three. So if we go back here, it makes sense. One, four, two, three, that's how we ordered it. Next, you look at query five and you'll see that we did it by instead of months we've got months here and we've got the periods here pre during and post and we can see the totals for each of these so if we wanted to see you know a breakout by months we can use this for campaigns we can see the pre during and post and you can use this then to graph you know and get incrementals from this um, or we can use it in the incrementals and uh, seasoning process, deseasonalized processes I have listed on my channel to uh, deseasonalize this data. But you could use this and look at you know a pre, during, post for a campaign. Now let's say I want to look a little deeper into this. So let's go back here, 
And next, so I have it broken out. That was by month. Let's do this one. So we got query six. Now remember we did earlier by week. Let's look at this. So we created week and we created month, right? Now we're instead of breaking out by month by period, we're breaking out by week by period. See, so we're back to query one, week, and then we're breaking it out by period. So this time we're going to have a lot more. Instead of just the months, we're going to have weeks. And then we do the same thing to order it. So watch what happens. We got query six and query seven, right? So query six, again, we have pre at the end. We got to reorder this. So we'd have to have one, four, two, three to order it correctly. And if it breaks out differently for you, you got to figure out which one is in which position of the columns to order it correctly. But if you look at this, now we got all the weeks. And what's neat about using all the weeks is you'll get some overlap sometimes of a campaign. So sometimes a campaign goes partially, you know, you have some during and some pre here. And same thing with here, you got some in the during and some in the post here. So you want to know that. You wouldn't see that in the monthly, but you'll see that in the weekly. So let's go back here. And we've also got query seven where we reordered it correctly so we can see it better. Same things we did right here. Same thing, query six this time. And put the C and the uh, order of the columns. Okay. Now let's go to query seven. So now you can see we have it correctly pre, during, post. We reordered them, right? And it shows the breakout by weeks of pre, during, and post. We obviously, in this case, we have a very small post, uh, probably due to limited time frame. Maybe they just wanted the report quickly. But you can still give them. Uh, incrementals based on this. You can look at the sales, look at the difference in sales. Obviously, if you look at this, you have no 200s here. You have a 200 here and a 197 here and a 198 here, which is higher than these. So obviously, sales went up for most of the period and then they died off in the last day, post period here. Okay. And uh, you can go and look deeper into this, but this is how you do pivot tables, especially on campaign marketing campaign data in R. And this is neat because you started with this and you didn't have these two columns a month and week, but you started with basically a here up to period. And with that, you can't see, you know, what was the marketing period? Well, you'd have to break this out and you'd have to work with it or take it out to Excel. You can do this very simply with just a few lines of code in R. That's what's nice about R. You can go and take this and break it out and do your pivot tables and your analysis right here in R. You don't need to go and take it out to Excel and then bring it back in to do other stuff. So if I want to go from this to incrementals or some of the other videos that I have on my channel, you know, all I got to do is follow what I showed you here. So first you read in your code, right? Or your code here, uh, data right here. After you've brought in the uh, correct libraries, if you don't have them, obviously install them. And if they're not working correctly or whatever, just check out your version of R and go and update your version of R. Um, Next, what we do is we get the month and the week, even though it doesn't make sense to have percent V, that's what uppercase V that is for the week. Um, this is how the code that we use. Then we aggregate it, and then we go and look into, you know, months by row, or rows by month, I'm sorry. And then we remove the NAs, you know, the missing numbers. And, um, then once we have that, we decide, okay, do we want to stay with query three, which is this, by customer ID. In this case, we decided we didn't want that, so we want it broken out by something else. So we go back here, and in this case, we have broken out by month by period. See that? So query four, we break it out by month and by period, and then inside here, we have aggregated the numbers that we looked at before. So obviously, we were doing, uh, if you go back here, you can see the numbers of what is it that we're doing here let's go back here if you go back here um, so you got customer ID and we're breaking out by quantity sold amount that's what I was looking for so this right here is what we're carrying through the numbers wise so you have your choice here we've done three different breakouts so the first one is a breakout by customer ID by month we so we pivoted that next one is Let's look at query five. You can look at query four or query six, but the thing is they're out of order. So let's just look at query five. Next, we did the same thing, but instead of by customer ID, now we have it by month and by pre during post. So we've aggregated it that way, which is a really neat way to look at it. You could break it out by stores. If you had store information, I don't remember if we do here or not. Let's take a look at query one. 
we do have stores, so we could have done that here. We could have done it by transact. Well, transaction number would be the same thing as doing customer ID. Those should be unique. Um, there's different ways you can do this and stuff. So um, we did that, and then in the end, we also looked at query seven right here, where we did it by week. This is the one where you're going to get more of a specific look at it. So I could actually look at it and say, well, in the first week of the campaign, here's what we did. Second week, third week, fourth week, fifth week, and then towards the end, it sloughed off at the end. We had a, our biggest week was the fourth, three and a half weeks into it because part of the week goes into the pre period. So that was split in there. Great way to look at it. You can graph this and then actually show people here's your pre period, here's your post period, or your pre during and your post period. People love to see us. Marketing uh, departments love to see you know how a campaign progressed what it did and then they love to see if you have post data because if you have any post data they want to see you know what is the permanence of that campaign did it stay did it grow are we above where we were so they that's what they want to see did it you know did it drop back down did people buy so much that they're not buying it anymore for a little bit the, obviously if we had a bigger post period we don't have a very big post period we had two and a half weeks basically if we had a bigger post period we could see more data from that but right now you basically just have with this data pre during and a little bit of post but anyway so that's how you do uh, pivot tables in R it's very simple do you see how quick and easy that is if you just load in your data you just do these lines of code just like this I could just actually just run this boom just like that and within seconds I have uh, let's show you right now so if I do this that's it see how quick that was it's already back and I can look at query 3 Right, query three is the one in the end, and boom, there it is. That's how quick you can actually end up with this, with the NAs removed, the zeros there. You don't, I don't have to do step after step after step in Excel. It's all automated. Yes, in Excel you can create macros, but look at how easy that is. That is so much easier than a macro in Excel. And the same thing. If I want to break it out by month, I just do this. See, and I just hit Control and Enter. And same thing if I want a period by week. There we go, and I could go then look at query five, there it is, and query seven, there it is. So that's how you do pivot tables in R. It's not as sexy and cool as some of the graphs and plots we've made, but guess what? You can take this and then go into some of the other videos I have down in my uh, channel here and learn how to do, you know, dealing with seasonality and looking at incrementals and segmentation and Sankey diagrams and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, with this data. I hope you found this helpful and useful. Uh, again, have a happy Thanksgiving and please take a moment to subscribe and like down below and please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. Have a great day.